live, but and on YouTube or something. Oh, okay. Uh, that's good. That's right. <laughs> now we can't, and everything we say will be so, so official. Real. All right. All right, so I'm Kenneth Hansen. been working on PowerShell for a, a long time, 12, 14 years. Uh, God, just a long time. And with yeah. me today is Angel Calvo. And Angel Calvo, I've been in PowerShell officially for like six months. Um, <laughs> but prior to that, I was responsible with Aaron Chappell as well as with, uh, with Jeffrey and Kenneth and a few others to run one of the vertical engineering teams within the cloud management organization. So I'm actually pretty excited to be here because it's my first summit. And um, we have a bunch of new stuff that we want to talk about with you. Uh, hopefully, you know, the time that you're going to be spending here for the next hour will be totally worth it. So I'm pretty excited and pretty proud to be here. So I can't resist saying about the yeah. picture. This was one of the first PowerShell deep dives we did yeah. a long time ago. I think this, was, this one might have been in Vegas or was in San Diego. Anyway, it was one of those. And it's just the key point is to have a good time and talk to each other and, and get along. First, we're going to talk about Microsoft. What's changing? And the answer is kind of everything. Everything, yeah. And there's a key change agent involved in this. And it's actually Satya. He's been with us a while. He's been with Microsoft quite a while. But he's been in the new role as CEO for a fairly short period of time as CEOs go. But I would say there's been a sea change in what's possible. We haven't necessarily achieved what's possible yet, right? We're still operationalizing a lot of the vision. But definitely, he's certainly shifted the culture to start to say that we're going to deliver value and everything is possible to recreate and to change and to do things differently. We, as we go through our presentation today, we'll try to highlight a few things that we think are different about both how we're shipping code, what we're deciding to ship, how we decide to ship it, and um, and how are you going to help us and contribute as well? Because I think one of the big pieces that I think it becomes more and more important as we start scaling up is that we need, uh, we need your help. And I think we're going to talk about those vehicles and how you're going to help us as well as a community. So pretty, pretty exciting. I think one thing to highlight is about this concept of how we are changing as a company. You know, how those changes will be affecting the PowerShell and ultimately you. And uh, I'm pretty excited about these changes because it's not just about process of engineering, but it's actually the also and how we're going to be developing the software moving forward and how we're going to bring that software to all of you. And how, we're going to, how you're going to help us, you know, to make those, the innovation, you know, not only just to get better, but actually to get that feedback uh, to us a lot sooner than before. Because historically, you know, especially releasing in Windows, it just takes sometimes a lot of time, you know, to get from feedback to getting that innovation back to you. So I think we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, yeah, just before you go, one of the things we've hit on is that it feels in mm -hmm. some ways, and this is just kind of, I've been with Microsoft for almost 20 years now. Can well, you hear me still? Yeah. You've been there almost as long as I know. He's had. been almost, almost I mean, a quarter century. I think like, like 24. Is kind Isn't that of crazy? <laughs> but it feels in some ways that we're finally returning a little more to our roots. If you're familiar with us in the mm -hmm. past, we used to be able to do stuff really quick. And then we kind of slowed down and weren't able to talk to anybody for a little while. And now we can talk to people again and do stuff really quick. So we still haven't quite got it figured out how we're going to do this in the new world, but it is kind of a return to roots in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, one of the great quotes that I love from Satya is, is this one. It talks about being customer obsessed, data driven, speed oriented, and quality focused. Of those four attributes, I would say we're probably becoming more customer obsessed and data driven. We've probably had just on the PowerShell team itself probably over 60 to 70 individual customer deep dive engagements over the past two months, which is a pretty fast run rate. Um, data driven, we're kind of working on collecting the data. You know, before we used to collect the data all on our heads, right? Now we're actually collecting data more efficiently in data lakes, data ponds, so once we start doing some business analysis intelligence runs on it. Um, we're certainly doing things faster. We've always tried to push the envelope a great deal on the PowerShell team. And we've gotten a little in trouble sometimes for doing that. But we're continuing to push the envelope a bit. Um, but now we kind of have more permission. That doesn't, now sometimes as we start to get a little more speed oriented, we might make a few mistakes. We might put a few things public. Oops, we didn't mean that. But nonetheless, it's probably better to go a little quicker than it is to go a little slower in the new world. Now we have permission to do that. 
which is a whole yeah. new world. I'm not quite sure we've, you know, I haven't quite landed the quality focus. We're working on that. And I see this is all kind of a process in, in change. Yep. We're not, we haven't, yeah. we haven't closed this yet. And this is all the other quotes that I like from actually Sati. Actually, this is all on Hell's Fault. He pulled them all out of the email. These are great quotes. Yeah. We'll sort of go through it. Yeah. So, anyway, one of the, the, the first thing about uh, what are we going to be changing is if we're going to go through today through the agenda. It's about it, what is changing is specifically around engineering and engineering roles and responsibilities moving forward and how those changes will have a, an impact on you right in our, in our community. I think that's very important. I'm actually pretty excited about that because like Kenneth has said earlier, in the last 24 years that I've been at Microsoft, this is probably one of the times that I feel the more excited uh, because it kind of reminds me of the days when we were basically, you know, uh, a little bit less organized, but significantly more efficient in the way how we bring code from our hands to the customers. So I think that's really, it's really uh, Awesome. The, the other thing too, we're going to talk about some announcements that we have. Uh, some of them the, are very excited as well because it's going to kind of tell you kind of where are we going as an organization, the type of releases, the type of uh, changes that we're going to be making moving forward. Uh, you're going to talk about a little bit data, data driven. Yeah, we'll uh, talk a little about We're data. going to talk about the results associated with that. Anyway, so let's get to it. So let's talk about the how we're going to evolve. So. Like I said earlier, you know, one of the things that, that was important for us uh, with these changes is how we move information, um, feedback from customers and partners into the engineering teams. One of the things that we learned when we were on Windows is that we needed to build this sort of a structure and processes and organizations in order to keep track of 6,000 engineers and I forgot how many millions of lines of code that we needed to go and manage in order to provide you a release in a three-year period, right? When you do that, you know, it takes a lot of the work from the process and the way how you manage quality and the way how you manage, you know, releases and previews. You know, now we are in this interesting opportunity, unique place where things are changing very rapidly. Now Windows is getting to you on a very frequent basis. Another thing that is happening is that we want our engineers to flood that data to us a lot sooner from you. So we want that feedback to continuously help us and empower us to actually build the right things. So pretty exciting. And based on that too, we needed to change a little bit the roles and responsibilities. You probably knew about the program managers. Uh, you know, they play a significant role in connecting with you, in connecting with uh, our partners and bringing that data back to us. But at the same time, we needed them to focus significantly a lot more about the data in how to take that data and make that data actionable so we can basically build the right things for an engineering perspective. And as well, we've shifted a little bit from where we used to be doing a fair bit of project management. So in a lot of ways, we own sort of, you know, how things are getting done and when they were getting done and sort of the details of project management. We sort of stepped out of that. And that's given us the chance to do a lot more of the customer time periods. We said sort of the discussion because we're out of the project management business. Project management is all now his fault. So if there's bugs, it's him. <laughs> yep. Right? If it's delayed, Sorry. it's Sorry. him. Yeah. Right? It's if the idea is great, it's... It's Lee's. <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. Ball. It's the customer. So that's yeah. kind of, we've begun to shift it a little bit more, uh, more, yeah. more uh, dramatically than what it's been, yeah. been before in the past. So, you know, just following that train of thought, so the software engineer is just a new role in Microsoft. But historically, we used to have developers and software engineers and tests. So what we done, we combine those two disciplines under one single role. So basically the software engineer now in Microsoft aligns a lot more with the industry, but at the same time makes pretty clear that if you write code, you own the code. Not only just from the perspective of how you design it or how you architect it, but the way how it's going to get released and the quality of that code. That is a fundamental shift in Microsoft. I mean, it's the first time that I said, in, since I know Microsoft history, where we made this chain. You know, before, you know, we rely a lot of both uh, software engineers to write a bunch of functional code, and then we throw it over the wall, and there was this other organization welcoming that code, and figuring out how to stabilize it, bring quality. It, although it made a lot of sense from managing a lot of the, the, what I would call, uh, features releases, at the same time, you know, it kind of slows down a little bit, and it, because it took a long time to stabilize the code, as you can imagine. And this is somewhere where, you know, one of the things we've liked about the community is we do kind of hold each other accountable. 
right? That's why we put out these WMF previews and so forth consistently so people can try and give us feedback. So this is where for sure you guys need to continue to sort of hold us accountable and make sure we have higher and higher quality to start to drive stuff. Because now we have the same people mm -hmm. doing the tests as we do actually doing the implementation. So there should be like a single point of contact for any problem you have. Whereas before it might have been sort of diverse. Now it's not. So don't, so lean in a little more, actually not a little less on it. Yeah. yeah. Are you saying like a single point of contact, like uh, what's actually the feedback mechanism? So we will talk about that in three slides. That. It's a great question. Can you repeat the question? Yes, the question was is, okay, so what actually is the feedback mechanism? We got two or three of them, and we'll sort of work through what you do in which case. And then we'll draw a little more even at Joey's session, which is later on in the week. Yep. And he'll go, through, he'll go through that in some more detail. Actually, this is a good uh, segue into what all these changes really means to you. Right? Now you understand a little bit what it means for us and, and the company. But for us, one of the things the, the, that we want to do is to provide you with something different. Is something that is going to make us more efficient. It is going to open a door as well for contributing and giving us feedback. So one of the things that we kind of got together is saying how we can find ways that we can simplify how we move innovation from the, the engineer's machine into you, right? It, so it's how we release it. If we start basically going through the process of rethinking it, you know, so going back to Satya's feedback was like, hey, if nothing is off the table. So we went and looked into PowerShell and we look at, so what does that mean to us? What are we going to do differently? How we can take care of that opportunity? It start rethinking not only just how we release, but actually how others can contribute into Microsoft. So you have seen historically, you know, we have Windows, we have released WMF, and then recently we started introducing the concept of previews and experimental. Another thing that we're going to start doing more and more is open source. E contributions and you actually start creating galleries, you start creating repositories where you can actually help us bring some of that innovation back into Windows and vice versa. We are not, we are not going to just contribute by providing you know, a set of technologies from Windows we just kind of say, hey, here's how we think Microsoft, we want you to do things. And the contrary, is we're going to go identify the right uh, open source projects and figure out ourselves how we're going to contribute as well. Right. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the announcements today about that. And some of them you already know. Uh, documentation. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's uh, right. Documentation. Now, this is a this is a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> because our, our documentation process is kind of complicated internally. So it makes it a little slow sometimes to get stuff out. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. That over time is going to shift. But also our intention. Now, this is an intention. It's not something I'm announcing today, but the direction we want to go is actually more and more to start putting the documentation in a public place so that you and we can both fix it. Now, there's like three or four ways you can think of doing that. We're not gonna tell you what those ways might be. That'll be coming, we think, over the course of the next few months as we try to actually say, how do we shift into a higher speed? Because, you know, the commandlets are great, and the code is great, and the resources are great, but if you don't know how the hell to use them, it only does you so much good. You sort of, uh, right? So the documentation, we think, is key, and it's gotten a little underweighted in terms of effort. We're going to actually help you guys help us to actually get that, make that a lot better. And I can't answer any questions on that. <laughs> but does that mean that maybe you might look to like the community, for instance, there's um, some commandments that have practically no help documentation, like you run get help with the command name, and there's one example or no examples. Um, would you be open to uh, you know, subject matter, matter experts on certain technology? That is a, so the, let me rephrase the question. So hey, does this mean that those commandments that you just didn't quite you know, whether it be core PowerShell commandlets or out of different teams that don't really have a strong set of documentation and possibly even have zero examples, that maybe the community might be able to contribute examples and have that actually get out in the Git help and everything else. Yeah, we'd love that. That would be a desire, right? I can't speak too much to that, but that certainly is a strong desire. And even some nits. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you how irritated it is when you just see a small typo. It takes like three weeks to change. Yeah. 
that does not follow the speed thing we saw yeah. in one of the Satya's quotes, right? Three weeks for typo does not equal speed. Yeah. So hopefully, so this is the motivation, right? Now, again, how far we get, when we get it, yeah. that kind of thing is still a TBD, but it's a certain was. Oh, when June wants to talk about documentation, who would have thought? All right, so let me make an observation. We're going to move off documentation. Yeah. Joey, raise your hand. It's all his fault. <laughs> so whatever you don't like about what we haven't done yet, talk to him. <laughs> all right. <laughs> By the way, everything in this presentation is Joey's fault. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just sang mail to Joey. Um, well, so, they're yours. Yeah, well, of course, if it's code, it's mine. The other thing is uh, we want to start introducing is this concept of more demos and tutorials with the innovation that we're going to be delivering. Imagine a world where we say, hey, look, we're actually building solutions, and those solutions will need some great documentation, but at the same time, we've got to start delivering some demos, some, some tutorials you know, associated with those solutions, you know, just to help you as well as the community as in general to really understand how to take that innovation and quickly get up to speed. Yeah, I think that is something that you're going to start seeing significantly more and more over time as well. And who knows? You know, this is, there will be other initiatives. I mean, uh, we are starting the journey right now, right? So I expect over time uh, we're going to continue figuring out ways of getting uh, resources, artifacts uh, in a different way. Uh, and I will encourage each of you, you know, to help out with those initiatives as well. Well, and as well, even if there's areas where you think we could be more open mm -hmm. and they don't show up on the list, feel free to just mention those, mm -hmm. right, a time or two, yeah. either, yeah, various formats. So don't, don't be shy. So announcements. So the Dave uh, Wyatt who was here talking about Baxter, right? So thank you, because one of the things that we've done is our first announcement is that we actually took Baxter, the framework, and we bring it into Windows. This is the first time, by the way, that we took an open source project brought it into Windows. You'll find it in Windows 10, you'll find it in Windows Server, next release. And I gotta say, this was actually a very exciting day for many of us, because uh, we learned what it takes, and we actually, like Jeffrey likes to say, we paved the way to actually allow these sort of things to start happening more frequently and more rapidly. So this is a, uh, it was a big effort by a lot of people in the company, but this is just kind of gives you an indication of kind of where we're going also. And, and this is the kind of thing that never would have been possible before, mm -hmm. right? We talked about the sea mm -hmm. change and sort of at the very top on down. This would have been like, you know, fireable or something, mm -hmm. right? But now it's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just a big, yeah. huge change. Tell yeah. who we're working with. Who, you. who we're working with. Oh, who with? Oh, okay, yes, yes. Uh, so, who is contributing into Baxter? Well, one of the things that, that we did initially is actually we reached out to VMware, and you know, thanks to the help of Jeffrey, and uh, we actually got a VMware to actually agree to contribute into Baxter. So, both Microsoft and VMware, you will start seeing more and more uh, contributions coming up in the near future. So, yeah, thank you. That was a, a good point. The other thing too, I mean, look at the list of open source uh, projects that they are currently available in GitHub. You can download today, but you can essentially start bringing some contributions. Uh, the DSC resources kit, it was released last week, I think some of you already know because it got Twitter <laughs> by a few people, uh, which was awesome. Uh, but today is the official announcement. And <laughs> you're gonna start. <laughs> So the, that, was the, the, that was a leak to the press, you see. Okay. So the, the other thing too that uh, we uh, want to announce is that the PowerShell script analyzer uh, will be open source. You will be able to contribute. Actually, I will encourage that because I think how we may uh, bring a script analyzer to be an amazing tool for all of us is to actually have people contributing on it. Because does everybody know what the script analyzer is? Who knows? When, yeah, right, exactly. Okay, yes. We should start playing with you, don't it? Try to yeah. just make your code a lot better by doing the analysis. Perfect thing for community, right? Yeah. You discover new rules, 
that makes some sense. Oh, I always find when I do this, it mm -hmm. screws me up. Okay, we add a rule, that kind of thing. Perfect, perfect example. Yeah. And I believe uh, Paul is going to, in his session of troubleshooting uh, PowerShell, you're going to talk a little bit about uh, script uh, analyzer, correct? So I would encourage you to go to that session on Wednesday, as I believe it is. The other announcement is Visual Studio PowerShell plugin. It, this is super exciting because here you have Visual Studio Online, who basically is already an open source uh, type community product. And now we brought PowerShell plugin. On, well, wow, I gotta tell you, it's one of those days too that I'm like very happy to see this because it really brings PowerShell really close to the DevOps community. And uh, you know, Andres Sainet is going to, with Brian Moore, do a, a, a demo today, right? You're gonna present it and you're gonna talk about that today at three o'clock? Yeah, all kinds of awesome stuff. All right. Yes, so another great presentation, that, uh, an announcement that uh, I will encourage for you to see because it really provides a really elegant integration with Visual Studio and it provides great resources and how to basically write from uh, encode to invoke PowerShell, it to actually use PowerShell as a method to automate, you know, service development and application development, so awesome stuff. Uh, Power, uh, PowerShell Package Manager, formerly known OneGet, Everybody know what OneGet is? Just okay, great. So we officially changed the name. Uh, you know, once we, you gave it to our marketing folks that, uh, and our legal team, they always come back and say, "No, here's the name that you gotta use." So PowerShell Package Manager is the official name for OneGet, and it will be available down level uh, for server and uh, Windows 10 client. And I think that is uh, available. Uh, very excited because we're gonna use pack, uh, PowerShell Package Manager more and more in the future by helping us to actually bring gallery artifacts you know, into Windows, right? So hopefully you see the relationship between what we are trying to do in the community, in the galleries and repositories that we'll be creating, and how we're gonna use something like Package manage, Manager to manage the, the, the publishing of those modules. So, pretty cool. Finally, there's going to be a WMF 5.0 that will work, go all the way down level. Right, so I know that you know it took a little while, but we are there, and uh, so it's pretty exciting because uh, two things: one is it will be fully downloadable, including DSC, and uh, I think in this particular release you're going to start seeing things like classes, things like that working downloadable, and uh, so that's pretty pretty awesome. Is this another yeah. preview, or is this the release? This is a preview. Okay. Uh, the release. Uh, no, it's a great question. It was preview. Uh, the reason, I think it, to uh, WMF 5.0, you know, you'll be tied more closely with the Windows cadence. Uh, and so that's the reason why it's pretty Will that include Casper in it? <laughs> uh, it will be included in uh, no in the April, but if you install the Ignite uh, Windows 10 uh, release, you will have it in, in the Ignite release. So, you know, we are planning to do a preview and, and as part of the Ignite announcement. So. You will be able to get that uh, pester and, and then over, Windows. Then. then over time, your question is: Will we actually take the pester and actually put it in one of the WMF releases down level so mm -hmm. you can use it yeah. on all your systems? Yeah. And we're looking into that. Yeah, we are looking into that. Yeah. Yes. Is the April is the April release an update to the February? Is that the February four point one? Uh, no, no, no. no, the February five. Oh, the February. Yeah. Yeah, it would be an update, absolutely. Yeah, yes. So it's both new stuff and further down level, right? Yeah. We're finally getting to the right level down level so people can actually start mm -hmm. to get into practice, play with it, give us feedback, yeah. all that all that kind of good stuff. Yeah. Will the uh, PowerShell package man manager be available to the public to put their um, you know modules be right on that to be able you know for the community to get, or is that only Microsoft? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. No, it's a great question, and I think uh, so. Are you familiar with chocolate here? Yeah. yeah so, for me. Oh, the question. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, the question was: Can other people contribute into repositories where one get can be used packet manager? You know, to actually download and install. In the answer is yes, you can. I think it's as long as they are in the chocolate here, is formatting and gallery, you would be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, there are some specific technical, uh, you know, design guidance that you got to follow. But yeah, there's nothing implementing for you to do that. Uh, there's the update rollup that we've sort of called DSC 1.5 mm -hmm. uh, that's available in Server 2012 R2. Will that be down level as well, or is it just 5.0 for now? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, and the, so the WMF 4.0 update, uh, you know, we are uh, it's not that level yet. I'm actually working on. The question was, is WMF 4.0 uh, also known as the 4.1 release that we did back in November, December last year? Will that particular WMF be down level? And the answer is not yet. Uh, we are working on it. My my goal is to have it available. Uh, there's this interesting uh, alignment now because we are going to be having 5.0, so we are working in the details so we don't confuse people. Right. And this does go back a little bit to, you know, you know, we said we're starting to get quick about things, but we're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. yep. We're not quite there yet, right? Yeah. There's still a lot of internal process we still got to find our way through. So you'll see us sort of, I mean, this is just going to happen over the next year or two as we sort of try to get quicker and then, okay, things are slow and you go, well, I thought you guys were more agile. The answer is, well, we're trying. Mm -hmm. You know, so keep up, keep asking the questions, keep pushing on it so we know what's important. Don't stop that. Mm -hmm. and just be aware that also we're going to be in this, you know, fit and start it sometimes. Well, well, once 5.0 hits production, it becomes a non-issue. It's just for now. Exactly. You might want to have debug mode and uh, uh, composite depends on and stuff like that. Yeah. No, no, it's, it, the, the question is, well, it kind of goes through that sort of alignment. It, once you release 5.0, it becomes basically a no event to release 4.0 because in reality it's already working that level in 5.0. Yeah. Well, that that's not quite true in a lot of customer scenarios. The, the, in order to get the So and there are a lot of good fixes and stuff in that update that right. are for a lot So repeat the repeat the non question <laughs> is hey look yeah 50 uh, getting 50 production is highly valuable and can alleviate some of the, the pressure for new features but the 4.1 uh, will probably flow through the uh, IT processes a lot faster so people will take advantage of the new benefit much quicker on a production basis mm -hmm. is that the that's kind of the yeah. gist of it. And it's, a, you know, this is exactly the kind of thing we, you know, we, we have to fight through both mm -hmm. from a resource standpoint and also just from a process standpoint. Yeah. Let me. And it kind of goes into just the close on this and the rethinking that we are going through about our releases. If you look at the previous slide, I think that we're going to start really rethinking even what things are going to be in WMF in the future, what things we want to put in Windows, what things are going to be in going to the community. So right now we are going through that sort of uh, early stages of start articulating, you know, what these packages will look like. So I suspect, you know, hopefully not two years, but hopefully a lot sooner, because uh, at least that's my goal. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, sometime this year we'll have a clear story and um, start sharing with everybody. Wait, just before we get off this one, yep. I just want to make an observation on this whole open source thing. It was really great once you did put the DSC resource kit out there to actually see how quick people jumped on that. <laughs> That was just wonderful. I mean, within hours we had, I think it was Dave, wasn't it? They actually had like like hundreds of lines of like changes yeah, to one of our DSC resources. Amazing. And then Joey or somebody got back to him and said, yeah, but the versioning thing, you got you kind of won't quite work with it. And like within, was it minutes? Or was it like, and it was under an hour. It was crazy, we got updated. So this goes back to the notion of just keep with us. You know, the more stories I can tell like that, we guys contribute, the easier it is for us to justify our existence. These are days for us to justify why we're doing these things, and frankly, the more benefit we get and you get. So anyway, much appreciated. Keep on it, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll make it together. All right. All right. So here we're going to talk a little more about how we start becoming a little more customer obsessed and a little more data driven, right? And we have, I see, we're beginning to take some baby steps. The data driven part that I'm not talking about, that we'll start doing a little more of over time, is more telemetry and measurements and so forth. However, there are some elements that we're starting to do now. First and foremost is, well, not first and foremost, but certainly one of the venues is Connect. You're familiar with Connect. However, due to um, all Joey's fault again, we do have some slight improvements to the UI. This is better. Just, it is. I swear it is. <laughs> and the good news is we're pretty clear about what's a bug versus a feedback versus a vote. And we're going to start triaging this stuff on a more regular basis. Some of the past, we've been a little slow because we can only do so much. We still might only do so much, we'll give better feedback a little quicker, we'll be able to triage more regularly. In fact, we're actually on kind of a weekly data triage via connect or individual uh, customer visits or whatever. I'll talk a little more about that in a second, what we actually want to get out of it. 
So do absolutely participate. Do continue to use it. Um, it is, but it is still connected. We, I know we've talked a little bit about user voice in the past is also another possibility. Um, in our case, we did sort of some discussion, some analysis around it, said we really don't want to lose the thousand or two pieces of feedback and input we already have. And in addition, it turned out that, anyway, there's some other more technical issues for why we actually sort of still land on Connect. If for some reason, Connect does not work for you, again, go yell at him or me, and I'll yell at him. That's okay, I like that. So just, you know, <laughs> tell one of us and somebody will get yelled at, it'll be beautiful. And then hopefully we'll make improvements over time so that you can give us feedback. In fact, I'm fine if you want to add a feedback that actually says, oh, Connect needs this improvement. That's okay. It's okay to not just give feedback, by the way, here about the product only, about a technical problem, if you're having a process problem or an interaction problem, go ahead and put it in. I'd rather have it in than not. This is probably as good a place as any, so it's actually captured and we make sure we hear it. Yeah, With Connects, I mean, this may change in the future, but one of the things is that you submit a bug report and it gets a bunch of votes or whatever, but the perception is that it just sits there. If you can, yeah. that, and I know that what you do is you take the stuff and connect and then you turn it into an in, internal uh, tracking True. item. Yeah. But if that can be a little more visible, we can see that at least it's been read and it's being discussed. I think that's actually a really key point. Let me repeat it. Um, part of the challenge with Connect, and it's kind of demotivating. Look, you, you think about it, you produce this great repro, you stick it in there, and then nothing. You don't quite know what happens. You don't know when it's going to come out. You don't know if we've looked at it. You know, did anybody even read what I spent an hour or two creating, right? And at least on the reading part, we're going to get a hell of a lot better, right? In terms of predicting when things shift, when things are going to deliver, that's a different, that's a little different. We're still working through how to, how to, how to engage there and kind of what the, I'll call the contract is. Um, so we'll, we'll get that figured out in the next couple of months, though and we'll sort of refine that process. Yeah. But absolutely, we should be able to become more transparent. Again, this went back to a little bit, right, to the environment of, of you know, silence, right? right? Yeah. And so we're, we're kind of out of the cone of silence, and we're allowed to, uh, for those of you who ever went to Get Smart, anyway, and are now allowed to talk to people. So we're, we're, we're able to yeah. do that a bit more. Do you want to? Well, yeah, one point that I want to add to your feedback, because I agree. I think it, I completely understand the perception when you have all this huge repository of, you know, uh, bugs and feedback. And the question is, how are we filtering it? What are we doing with it? And I think it goes back to the rethinking. I think as we start moving more and more into a community, a kind of driven feedback, I think that we got to rethink. I think this is what Kennedy was going with in the next two months about, and what are the tools that we'll need, right? Do we need to take an approach similar to Visual Studio Online, for example, they have their backlist available in the community. So maybe that should be our backlist as well. Why we gotta have a different one, you know what I mean? So I think it, there are great opportunities for us and how to optimize, you know, the way how we work together. If you just put PowerShell on GitHub, you can just use the issue trackers. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yes. Great idea. <laughs> Which leads us to the next bullet point, participating in GitHub. <laughs> However, I'm not announcing PowerShell on GitHub. Oh, Just thought I'd say we're absolutely not announcing that. So okay, <laughs> GitHub absolutely. It's the only great idea. <laughs> it's still good. Yeah, do participate. Now it is a little wonky. Here's kind of a, a quick slide on it, and this goes back to kind of the Satya theme of every team must find ways to move faster, more efficiently. Certainly, GitHub is more efficient for us in many ways for some projects, right? That went back to the discussion just had on the whole open source and the interaction with it. A few observations. Um, we have a bunch of stuff up there right now. We've already kind of went through those be before. We'll still have more to come. One key point I do want to land here is that if it is a piece of code on GitHub, go ahead and use the GitHub issues to submit it instead of the connect. Yeah. If you put it in connect to it, that's okay. We'll live with it. But the right place for it would, of course, be the GitHub repository because we'll actually be triaging across both data sources. It turns out that we have a ton of customers, you know, millions, right? And we have many people who love and use PowerShell. I don't know if we're up to millions and millions, but we have millions and millions of downloads. And so we have tons of people who use it, though. And we can't really expect everybody to flow through one and only one data channel or to get data only in one spot. That's just not reality. And so part of what we're continuing to educate Microsoft even on is internally is, hey, you can't just have one process for getting customer data. There's always this desire to sort of, you know, go for the, you know, the latest, you know, shiny object that looks like the solution to all customer data problems. And there isn't one. We'll just keep refining them. So, oops. so feel free to go ahead and give us input on the on GitHub as well as on uh, on Connect. All right. 
Now, when I talk, we've had about 60 to 70 uh, in-depth customer interactions over the past two months. That's actually fairly accurate. And we've been keeping fairly good track of it. We take detailed notes. And I'd show you those notes, but it contains a bunch of customer data and information, so I'm not. <laughs> However, what I can tell you is that out of that, we do spend a few hours every week across the staff and actually analyze what changed and what new information came in, be it in Connect, or in the GitHub, or in the customer data. And we generate something out of those that I want you guys to start getting your head around, and that's an I can so that statement. So we just take a look at it, right? I can, you know, I can uh, specify, now these, by the way, are direct out of customers, so these are not actually our digested form of them yet. The digested form will be a little more complete, right? But these are just out of the customer notes. It says, okay, I can, uh, I can you know, state the dependencies across PowerShell modules so that I can more easily install all components needed to manage my system. Make sense? You know what I want to do, right? There's two key elements to this. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because as you give us feedback in Connect or even in person, it is great to get it in that format. I can understand it, I can parse it, I can throw it into the system really easy and I can search on it, okay? The I can says, what the hell do you want to do? And the so that says, why the hell do you want to do it? Right? And that's really kind of important. Because sometimes if we just see those I cans statement, then, then an engineer comes up trying to code things, well, I don't get it, why is that important? You know, what are they actually trying to do? If I have an I can so that, we can get to the demos, we can get the tutorials, we can flow all the way through the process and get it back to you, know when we're complete enough and say, yeah, I really fit, right? We can start doing internal validation a lot better. So don't just tell us what you want, tell us why you want it. And insofar as you can digest it, and having, having the full paragraph or two or three of what you're trying to get done is great. In fact, do that. And then if you're able to digest a little bit so that I can, so that, that's, that's also great, and we can take it directly from there. Every, make sense? You with me? So it's a great way to get the feedback as well, because that's what we're going to generate over time. All right, and customer interaction. We have this team at Microsoft called the CAT team. It's a whole customer engagement team. Michael Green, there he is. He's actually a member. He's a great guy. Um, so, and their whole job is to make, they keep, they have a whole list of, um, oh, excuse me, they have a whole list of, um, that was actually the CAT team just texted me, that's why I paused, it's relevant. <laughs> they have a whole, whole list of customers that they want to engage with. And as we've started to re-engage more and more with our customers, we've decided to grow that database substantially. Right now, they've been a little focused on corporations. And they're shifting to be focused on, I would just call, people and customer engagements. So we don't care how many different contacts we have at company ABC, that's okay. So the request for you, so we're gonna hand out some cards. In fact, we'll do it right now. There we are. Yeah, I'll be the card. Here, I've got a couple of them. If you don't, these are all ways for you just to sign up. And if you don't, you should take one or two. Because give them to yourself and pass them out to your customers. If you're a trainer or you want to give more people at your work, take two, it's fine, we don't care, then we'll make more. But on there, what you'll see is the actual akms.powershell.ecg, and that link should be live now. And I was just told that... Oh, yeah, it's underscore. Sorry about that. That didn't work either, though. Anyway, I won't update the slides. This, the card's got it right, doesn't it? It will soon, yeah. It's an underscore ECG. You can always change whatever it is to match the cards. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so the camp team, yeah, so, so as we start to... And we'll give them out to people throughout the whole weekend. They'll be around just available. Because we want to make sure you give them to enough customers and pass them out. And what happens then is if you respond to them, then you'll start getting involved in product planning surveys. You'll start getting involved in early adoptions. Some teams, not just the PowerShell team, it'll be across all of Windows Server System Center teams. will start to involve you more deeply in 
on-site visits or on uh, deeper technical discussions over the phone. Make sense? So it's really important. Get the message out there. Again, that's not just, this, we'll start with PowerShell. This is the PowerShell community, but in fact, once you're in their database, you're in there for everything, or you can choose. All right, other than that, we're gonna drive engineering directly. Let me go, I'll go briefly here and I'll just show you that I'm not lying very often. Got four minutes. We'll end in just a second. Hold on a second. I hate this because I can't actually, there it is. If you just take a look at it, what you'll see here, People can understand it, you gotta move it. Oh, jeez. There we go. Here? There we go. Then you can maximize it. Maximize. No, no. Yeah, no we you mouse, you must. Okay, I think that's good. Anyway, what you see is down here a whole series of user wants, and underneath there you'll get a series of I can statements. Did you actually can? That's the one I want to hit right there. Did I get that right? Oh, no. All right, I'm going to give up. Pull it out. Come back. Come back. Come back. All right. Anyway, my only point is that the I can statements, if you look underneath one of those scenarios, you'll actually see an I can so that exactly almost like you saw before. And that's exactly what we're driving the engineering out of. Yeah. So all of his tasks will roll up into one of those I can so that statements. Yeah. Make sense? What that means, by the way, is your name or your customer's name will also be in that I can statement if you submitted it. So when it's done, we'll be able to tell you, oh, we think we did it, and we think it's in this WMF preview, so go check for it. That comes to this point right here, which is the validation to make sure we actually did it. It comes back to the person who actually wanted it. You with me? So that's actually a really important approach. That's why I want to make sure you highlight how we're doing that. Good? Yeah, no, good. Uh, so, I think it's so, this would be kind of like the summary. Of this is the would, summary. This is yes. what I would call the summary of the presentation. <laughs> but I think, you know, one of the things that, that is important is that you know that this is it's new. You know, this is a journey. You will need your help. You know, we got to try it. I know that there will be things that we're going to get wrong and start. But I think a part of that journey, by working with you, I think we'll be able to adjust when needed. Yeah, I think our, our goal is to get the feedback from you as soon as, as possible, try the new things that we're going to put up there, contribute. I mean, PowerShell is not anymore a Microsoft thing, it's a community thing. All of you are PowerShell. So you help in how you're going to help us, you know, build a better PowerShell, it's going to be basically a benefit for all of us. So one of the things that's really important, especially to me, is when I start thinking about engineering innovation, is that I got to pay a close attention to you and about the things that are important to you. It's through scenarios and data that you can give to the PM team, or your feedback and contributions in the community. Those things, things together, it's gonna, I think it's gonna help us, all of us, to build an amazing ecosystem. So anyway, that's a, from my point of view, that's what I'm really looking for. Uh, you know, I'm gonna be here for the next three days, and I can't wait to speak with each of you. If you have questions, if you have feedbacks, if there's anything wrong with the code that you want us to at least think about it, uh, that's what I'm here for. Um, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The red button again? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Done. Okay.